let's evaluate how well our interpolation methods did. The accuracy of our output, of course, is defined by how closely the predicted value matches the actual value at the location. Um, so this can be difficult to do, obviously, because we don't always know the values at all of the predicted locations. We only have the information that's in our input data set. So we are going into this exploring how to test validity in our data, um, and we are going to ask, uh, well, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to compare the validity of our two different data sets. Um, I choose, chose two interpolation outputs that I felt like best reflected, um, I should say, just had the best outputs. Um, I went with the spline tension method with 12 points because I thought that did the best. Um, and I went with the IDW8 points, although you could have stuck with the default two if you wanted to. Um, so we're going to compare and see which one performed better. The first thing we need to do is go to our SRO data and we are going to open our attribute table. We are going to select all of our points. I guess we could select these on the map. Actually, let's do it that way. Let's turn off some things that can be selected. Okay. And we are going to select all of our points. Okay, so they've all highlighted in blue. And we're going to hold down the shift key and click on two points um, to unselect them anywhere on our map. So you could pick any two you wanted. So I'm going to pick this one. Maybe. Let's try that again. Okay, I said shift, but you want to hold down control. Oh, and then, so I picked that one, and let's go ahead and we'll pick this one. Hold down control, click on it, and those two have been removed. So we have to remember which two points we picked. So we'll go from here to our attribute table. And we'll see uh, the not selected ones are point object ID. I'm writing this down. Object ID 36 and 39, the average temperature. And 36 with 57.6. And the average temperature, oops, for uh, this other one was 72. Okay, so write that down. Now what we are going to do is look at our geoprocessing tools and basically redo our spline and redo our um, uh, IDW results. So we want our spline tension with the 12 points. Um, we will, spline tension, we'll call this eval. Um, and we'll go ahead and click run. Now what we're seeing on the output is we reran our spline tool without these two points. So we'll go back and we'll look for our IDW tool and we'll do the same thing that we've done before. Um, we're leaving the layers uh, selected. Uh, 12, I did 8 and 2, 8 changes to 100, let me check the environments real quick. Okay. And we'll go ahead and click run. And we can see we now have our results from our eval test for both. And again, these both, we ran the same tools. The only difference is it had two less points to calculate um, uh, the surface from. So we will evaluate the outputs against each other. The first thing we will do is figure out our input points so we can look at those two. 
and hair. I'll zoom in here and we'll click on an explore window. We'll click on this button here. And the original, sorry, let me do that again. Our original, oops, nope. Let's turn that off. Uh, let's turn these off. Turn that off. Um, so our original temperature here is that 57.6. Um, if we zoom in a bit, um, we can, let's see, hold on. Let me just go ahead and zoom back out. We are going to, so the, the exercise will walk you through one way to do this. We are going to look for the tool, extract values to points. This tool is going to, as it says, let me pull that up real quick, pull the, uh, extracts a cell value based on the raster. Um, so it's going to pull the, the uh, raster value for each of our, the points. Um, so what we could do is, let's go to reverse our selection. Oops, go in here. Switch that. All right, so now just our two points are selected, um, the two that we studied. So we'll go our inputs are here, and it should just pull the selected ones. We'll first pull it off the IDW eval, and we'll call this IDW eval points, interpret value point. Just go here. And we can see we've had a new point layer added and we can check on that and see what this says. We can see from here that um, our average temperature at our Los Angeles location was 57 that was recorded. The raster value estimated at 59. The Riverside was 72, estimated at 74. Um, we can do this again um, with the tension. And we have our spline results. And we can see we estimated uh, the Los Angeles was actually 57, estimated at 59, 72 for Riverside, estimated at um, 76. So we can look at the difference between the two. And um, uh, this is kind of a hard choice because neither of them are. This is two off, two off. This is two off. This is four off. So you could argue that spline performed a little bit worse. Um, but, I mean, we could redo this a couple times and test a couple different points. I probably would argue that IDW in this example is a little bit better. It looks like it is overestimating, but oh, tricky. Um, I guess you could say that both are equally fine, <laughs> which I guess is not an answer. Um, let's see, both are over predicting a bit, our values are a little bit high, um, so I don't know if one is necessarily that much better than the other, but they are too, uh, that is how you do, how you evaluate your data, uh, results, um, you do the, you pull a couple points out and then you test them to see, evaluate how they are against, um, their, um, recorded point versus the estimated point value.